Good morning, everyone. When was the last time you bought something from your government? It may sound like a bit of a strange question, but we all do it every day. We pay taxes at cash registers and online shopping carts so that states can buy textbooks for kids. Now compare that shopping experience to maybe uh, going to your local Apple store or shopping mall. And think about that comparison to things we do all the time, from marriage licenses and housing permits to the healthcare system and even uh, the electricity grid. The truth is that there is a big disconnect that we feel in our consumer lives compared to the services we're receiving from our governments. We have higher expectations because innovative products and services are making our lives better every day. And yet the government services are usually holding constant in terms of their customer satisfaction and most likely declining due to constraining budgets. So the reality is we have this widening gap between our expectations and our personal lives. We know what can actually happen but the ability for governments to deliver on those services are declining. We all have the right to demand more. We can encourage demand, implore our governments to be more open to new innovations and to new partnerships because the truth is governments cannot do it by themselves. So I'll, I'll share a personal confession as to where this frustration uh, and inspiration started. Shortly after the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, uh, I served as a counterterrorism officer in the U.S. Navy and here on the USS Spruance, an old tin can destroyer. My gunner's mates all knew that we were kind of doing something a bit weird by firing very expensive cannons at imaginary targets floating in the middle of the ocean. Not a lot of terrorists floating in the middle of the ocean back then, but that was the service we were asked to deliver, completely disconnected from the actual needs of our nation. And the picture is not coming, I'm just right, but I'll tell you a quick story about something a bit closer to home. This is an actual form that you have to fill out if you are like me and you live in the great state of California and you employ a home-based worker. You have to pay taxes quarterly and in this case you have to uh, cut a form exactly, where is it, eight by three and two-thirds inches, <laughs> inches with a ruler and if you do not cut the form properly they will not follow your tax payment, they will penalize you for not paying taxes uh, and, and that's basically, and then they come after you, right? So imagine if Amazon, Amazon.com had that series of steps for you to buy anything online. The truth is that this is the norm, right? This is, as we've heard from other speakers today, this is how governments deliver services to us. But there is also room for hope. There is cause for inspiration because there actually are examples right now of governments working in more innovative partnerships with other service providers. And I'll, I'll share an example of that by telling a story about the all-American experience of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So recently there was a salmonella outbreak in jars of peanut butter. The Food and Drug Administration very responsibly issued a voluntary product recall, but how many of you go to the FDA's website on a regular basis? It's ridiculous. No one would do that, right? Well, thankfully, in my case, I received an email from an innovative service called Google that informed me that my jar, specific jar of peanut butter was actually at risk, and they encouraged me to throw it away. In fact, they even gave me the refund of $5.84 without me having to ask. If it wasn't for this innovative partnership, open data from governments, delivered to me in a familiar fashion through companies or other organizations, I never would have known that the breakfast I was making for my son could have been poisoned. The truth is governments cannot empower people by themselves. They're trying, it's not going to work. They are suffering from a history of complex regulations uh, to prevent the corruption that has then created this complexity of impossibility for procurement and talent management. Most governments suck at procurement and are terrible at retaining the best workers. So the truth is they cannot do it themselves. They need to work within a network. And not just of other governments or companies, but also their constituents. Because the funny thing about the customer satisfaction of government services, people actually feel a greater sense of ownership when they're asked to scrub in and help. And I'll show some evidence of that. Today, hundreds of companies across the country rely on open data, that's uh, public digital information that can fuel innovative products and services, to power their solutions. Many of those inspirations come from conferences like this with uh, former U.S. Chief Technology Officer Todd Park standing on chairs imploring businesses to help the federal government in this case solve common problems while also making their businesses more profitable. Uh, for those of you that are uh, lucky enough to live in a fine city, a lot of cities in America, most cities in the United States and increasingly throughout the world have a customer service system, basically a phone call to report a pothole or a broken street light. Uh, this is increasingly important. You can't see the, the you can see the data up here. Uh, during Hurricane Sandy, this is a heat map of phone calls during the disaster response. This is not just about resiliency. This is also just basic government operations. In San Francisco, they were able to save one million dollars through a digital translation of people calling in service tickets. 
Are you a Department of, of Transportation that can't quite afford painting or some uh, upgrades to public infrastructure? Well, think about something that New York City did. They asked students to help, and they did it voluntarily so they can have a nicer walk to school. Uh, in San Francisco and Chicago, uh, innovative organizations like Code for America and others are actually uh, collecting, convening mayor's offices and government staffers to sit down with local entrepreneurs to not just come up with mobile apps, which are, which are great, but the, what they're doing is they're teaching governments what they actually need to deliver in a better way to their constituents. And by the way, a lot of these civic entrepreneurs are going off to create their own job creating businesses as well. And just think about parent-teacher associations, community gardens. Think about uh, the public art projects. These are public-private partnerships that need to be reinvented and reinvigorated because that is the fundamental way that governments can actually improve their customer service without the increased resources to do so in the old-fashioned way. We, together, need to demand that governments be, be more open, open about how they're spending our money, open about their own performance metrics, open up uh, their own data through a program while protecting privacy, confidentiality, uh, confidentiality, and security. Because in doing so, they can actually improve their own operations. This is not just the responsibility of government. It will improve their own efficiency and improve the quality of our collective democracy. Thank you so much to Got Your Six for this opportunity to share a few stories.